I think that my work, uh, I think a sort of traditional way to describe my work would be collage. Um, it, it is, it works like collage on a number of different levels, um, both on a narrative level and on a formal level, um, in that it is a, a, an accumulation of materials coming together to create a more complicated whole. And yet I'm interested in sort of preserving all of those layers in their um, primary forms as well, so that you have this kind of cross-pollination between um, the source material and what I ultimately um, uh, make from these uh, these different variables that I that I, I found with shorter subjects, I'm able to draw people into the films, and um, I found that with the syncopated uh, subtitles, um, that people tend to fall into the work and and um, are more inclined to to watch it serially. And that goes back to this idea of the, um, the layers in, in, in the sense that these films are meant to be viewed um, multiple times. And I think that by preserving all these layers, both, of, uh, both visually and formally and um, further conceptually, that there is something to unpack as you watch these things serially and that, um, that a first glance through the film isn't enough and that, it, that, that there is further material to, um, to, be, to be had as you watch these things um, over and over. We take in so much, so many stories and so much information, and yet very little of it remains. And um, sometimes there are obvious reasons why a particular story or an anecdote sticks with us and that we recall forever and becomes part of our own kind of interior um, structure that w that we use in terms of how we define ourselves you know we are we are ultimately collages of our own in terms of um, uh, an, an interior sense of the stories that that we've used as building blocks to kind of create our own sense of character and and to mark our our, our, our own selves some things stick with us some things it's a cliche to say it struck a chord with us, but there is something very significant about that because it happens to all of us. And I like to pay attention to the remainder, the, the, the stories that, that we find have a special significance that we can never quite forget and that we um, hold on to. I think all artwork really ultimately has an autobiographical quality. Certainly these are stories that have had um, significance to me, but for example, in the um, in Garland One, there's a film called Anne, and it is specifically about the death of my mother, and yet loss and death of, you know, I, very often these are, they're very broad subjects as well, and so it's by referring to the personal, I can actually speak more easily about the you know, universal subjects that we all share and have um, a kind of connection to. The, the story of a, of a fair, you know, ultimately, it takes a very particular form on the west coast of the United States, where I'm from, this very um, colorful, uh, kind of ridiculous uh, carnival, really, with lots of bright lights and balloons. And, and its form was probably um, sort of solidified uh, where I'm from in the 1940s or the 50s or the 60s. It looks a bit like that era. And yet, a harvest festival, which is what it ultimately is, is of course a very ancient uh, ritual. And, and I'm interested to, um, in, it was a perfect subject for me in that sense too, that it was um, uh, an event, this, this fair itself, that is contemporary. I mean, they're, they're ongoing, they happen every autumn. Um, it was part of my history, it was something that my family participated in when I was a child. And also, it relates to our most kind of ancient traditions, um, uh, at least European traditions of uh, uh, a celebration at the when the when the harvest comes in, and uh, this is part of the sort of structure of, of layering that I that I was referring to earlier that I think is fascinating actually that that we have particularized memories and. Uh, uh, associations, and yet these are all part of a um, much vaster structure as well, um, in which we're only, you know, 
participating briefly. <laughs> Quite simply, there's a limited number of words that can appear on the frame at any given time. And so um, uh, when you are starting, I would write a story, which was long and convoluted, and I would have to um, serially cut down and edit and refine and condense and condense and condense until I was able to make the story make sense in this um, very almost poetic structure of... Um, a very syncopated um, thoughts or phrases which are strung together. And I became very fond of this um, process of editing and condensing um, to get toward the core of what it was that I was trying to, um, really the essentials or the, the bones of, of what it was that maybe attracted me to these uh, narratives in the first place. Sound of the film passing through the projector is a kind of soundtrack, first of all, in its own right. Um, uh, some of us share a memory of having heard that in the past. It was certainly something that um, I shared, and it was one of my attractions to this type of cinema because it was um, how I learned the stories of my own family. We would gather together in the living room. My grandfather was an avid amateur filmmaker, and uh, it was fascinating to see um, and be able to believe and enter into the past as a child um, through the films of my family that I could suddenly see my mother as a young girl and we really do enter into and believe film um, and I love that simple magic that it produces that uh, that even though we can see the mechanism and we can see that it's a, merely a series of images passing through this machine we believe that images live on the screen. We're, con we're both conditioned to that, and it is something quite uh, unique, I think, in, uh, and, and powerful in, the, in, in film. Uh, come into my uh, installation and, and watch the films and, uh, from beginning to end in a more traditional manner. And, but at the same time, I don't think it's an, it's an invalid ex uh, experience of the work to come in and glance at the film and see these two projections side by side, because I, I actually think that there's a type of image that I'm after and uh, uh, again a, a particular palette and um, I, I think that that you can construct your own um, sort of movie by editing the two screens together in your own mind a bit in the way that we all become montages with our remote control and our televisions I love the movies that people make because I think it's such a common practice people love to sit in front of a screen and they find the um, the programs inane, but they love to sort of scroll through the channels and, and kind of construct their own movie and see a bit of this and a bit of that. I, I think we've all become montages in our own way. And uh, uh, so I encourage you to, um, to do that with my films as well so that they can go on and have a, another life um, beyond the one that, that I've uh, given to them. <laughs>